God in your life, in your prayer life, he's getting ready to restore power. Q, he's getting ready to restore quality, which is your character. God, I don't care how bad you messed up. God said, I'm getting ready to restore it. R, he's getting ready to restore relationships, the relationships that you have with God and like with one another. S, he's getting ready to restore you. So don't worry, the Lord will make a way somehow. Listen, but you got to do your best in service. You got to do the best that you can. But when you choose to do the right thing, even try to stop you, but you can't. Don't worry, church, and don't pray. Yeah, yeah, the Lord's not. Oh, I'm excited. Today is a great day. Come on a little bit closer. Turn that volume up a little bit. Get on the phone. Tell somebody to tune in. Today is Founders Day at the Paxson Revival Center Church. We will be honoring our pastor, Reverend Jimmy and Joyce and Dobbs. That is Brother Welton Lane up on the organ. And Brother Welton Lane will be with us singing this morning and singing and preaching tonight. Brother Welton was one of my dad's favorite spiritual sons. He just loved, my, he loved Brother Welton. Brother Welton loved my dad. And today it's Founders Day. And if you've ever been blessed, saved, delivered, set free, ever heard a good word from Pastor Jimmy Dobbs? You know, everybody heard Jimmy Dobbs. Well, today is for us to come and honor him. Today is the day that we set aside to honor my mom and my dad. 56 years of victory right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. You don't want to miss. I'm going to take you in just a little bit of what happens and going to happen now. I'm, I'm going to show you stuff from last year because I'm saving all the good stuff for today at 1030. Church starts early worship at 10. How the celebration at 1030. You want to be here. I don't want to let you see my dad preach just a little bit. Hey, you know about that time when them boys faith move mountains and they got up and come running in the, through the gates into the city over there and God turned on his amplifiers and made those four lepers so poor until they couldn't hardly walk. So hungry, they were starving to death. They, but, he, but he turned on his amplifiers, and those boys were sitting around their tables, fixing to serve steak, fixing to serve some greens and beans, chicken and rice, and everything nice and the pies, all that good food. Had the tables all set. And those four boys could smell it down there blocks away, or through the wind blowing that away. They said, boy, I smell some good food. They some of the best cooking going on over in that section I ever seen in my life. Seen they had a meal in years. I've been out outside the gates but said, boys, you smell what I smell. You feel what I feel. Said, I feel pretty good. I feel like we may be fixing to get something to eat. And one boy said, yeah, I began smelling a little bit of it too. And the other said, I'll smell it too now. I'm ready to get me a meal. God reached over and turned on his amplifiers and them old boys were trying to tiptoe down the street and it sounded like thunder. It sounded like an army of thousands and tens of thousands of soldiers come marching in the city and them men, uh, people all heard that uh, four little poor lepers boys coming in there and uh, heard them uh, footsteps and it sounded like thunder and sound like uh, 10,000 soldiers uh, coming in there and the table was all set and them four boys uh, come easing down the, that uh, sidewalk and then people jumped up uh, from under their tents and their houses and run off and left them cooked meals and them vittles upon that table and when they got there there was nobody there and the table was set. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd, and I uh, shall not want. Uh, oh, brother, uh, come on, saints of God. Uh, when they got there, they found the table had already been set. Uh, the Lord had it prepared. Uh, all they had to sit down uh, and eat that good food uh, uh, God had made for them. Uh, the Lord uh, would pull up a brand new window and pour it out. Uh, honey, your lights may be turned off. God will turn them on. Uh, you may need a house payment. Uh, oh, God will pay it 
for you. You may uh, need an automobile uh, a payment. Uh, my God shall supply your needs uh, according to, to his riches and glory. God uh, won't let you down. Uh, he said, I've never seen the, the righteous forsaken, uh, nor their seed uh, a begging bread. Can I pump a little faith in you? Come on, saints. Uh, where is your faith? Uh, uh, turn your faith to loose. Uh, my God, tonight, tonight, uh, won't be tomorrow. Right now is accepted. Uh, give him a, a real good cap offering. Oh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to see, get old school today. We're going old school today with Pastor Jimmy and Joyce and Dobbs, and we're going to have such pictures like this. And How many are the chains I've helped to free? I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so very much for me? No longer will. Oh, you see what we're going to do? That's at 1030. Oh, and if you used to come here a long time ago, your granny used to come here, your mama used to come here, you want to be here today because we're going to be showing videos on the screen, and you may just be a little tad. You may just be a little smaller than you are now. You may have been sitting in one of those little pews in, in the building next door. How, we want you here today. Remember, church starts at 10 o'clock. How the celebration at 1030, and you want to be here. It's going to be awesome, and tonight, Reverend Welton Lane will be here preaching and singing. How the, uh, He'll be honoring it, and the videos will continue on tonight. Great things are going to be happening in the service tonight. It's going to be awesome. I get to honor my dad today by preaching. I get to honor my dad. I know I can't preach as good as he can, but I'm sure trying. I know that I, sometimes I say I can never walk in those steps, but I'm sure trying. I'm, uh, and if I never be able to walk in his steps, I'm honoring my mom and my dad by continuing on with this ministry. We want you here today. Pax and Revival Center Church. Remember, still three services, 10 o'clock, 1030 and 6 p.m. You don't want to miss what God is doing here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Into the preaching of God's word. If you have your Bible, go with me to the book of Psalms chapter 51. Oh my God, I've got, I, I promised y'all I wouldn't preach long enough that y'all can get out before the Jaguar games. Y'all can't play anyhow, so all you can do is play, is pray for them. Hallelujah, and as cold as it is, you're going to need a lot of prayer up there for them today. <laughs> Hallelujah, I hope they put some long johns on or whatever that keeps them warm, you know, just... But if you'll stand up with me today, and let's, y'all know I don't get all tied up when in, in, uh, in your dock, I don't get, I, I don't know a whole lot about games, so, but I do get a little excited about the Jaguars because they, they represent our city, so you, we need to pray for them. And in the early worship, we had some brothers wearing a Steelers jersey. Can you imagine? Come up to church with a Steelers, sit on the second row, made me look at his Steelers but I will have to say, whenever he stood over beside the other ushers and had the Jaguars, there's one of them's going to win. <laughs> there's one of them's going to win. But thank God I enjoy being saved. I need folks, real folks, that say, Pastor, I want to get the word. I want to preach the sermon on commitment, but I, I'm afraid people wouldn't sit here and listen at it because people are not committed anymore. People are not committed to the husband, committed to the wife, committed to the job, committed to God, committed anywhere. But pain will cause you to commit. Struggle will cause you to, you to commit. Last week in the, in the book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 12, because God spoke something to me this year about this year being a year of restoration, that God is going to restore unto us. In the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 12, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me in the free spirit. Now, you may be saying, last week I talked about God restoring the joy. Because I really believe that church folks lost joy. 
We used to get joy, 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 joy down in my heart. We're down in my heart. We're down. Now a little bit of storm takes your light away. A little bit of storm takes your joy away. So I talked last week about restoring joy. Now I just want to go to me in the book of Genesis chapter 42. Because I want to lay this foundation that God is a God of restoration. That God will restore back to you. In the book of Genesis chapter 42, that when Joseph had to deal with his brothers, here what there's, what's in Genesis 42 and verse 25, then Joseph commanded to fill the sacks with corn and restore every man his money. I get excited when I read that because there's some banks that took some of my money. Uh, uh, Young girl in service this, uh, this morning, a woman of God, that spirit spoke to me, called yesterday, and First Lady and I, uh, uh, and you called just to check on her, and she was on the telephone because uh, uh, a phone company had ripped her off for three, two, three years, and, and it seemed like it, it was not going to uh, uh, resolve the problem, and I prayed for her, hung up on the phone, and she come back this morning and say, Pastor... Uh, the phone company restored me all $1,500 back to me and canceled the debt. What I'm talking about is God restored. So some of you think about God restoring my joy, joy. No, God's going to restore some of your ministry, some of your destiny, some of your gifting, some of your callers. He's going to restore some things in your life. And here Joseph said, I tell you, restore everything, that all the money, put it in the sack and give them enough for their journey. Not just enough, which I, I, I'm, I hope I got time to finish it because God just ain't going to fix it a little bit. He's going to give you up and beyond what you started with. Some of you hold on to that so that when I get to it a little bit further, I'm going to give it to you up beyond what you ever even got started with. And then in Genesis 42 and 28, he said to his brothers, my money, my money, the brother said to one to another, my money is restored. Now, here he was in chapter 42, Joseph said restored. And then as you begin to see in, in Genesis 42 and verse 28, he said to his brothers, my money has been restored and even in my sack and my heart fails me in excitement. And they were afraid and said one to another, what is it that God has done unto us? God's getting ready to do something to you. He's getting ready to reverse some things and turn some things upside down. Well, Pastor, what, are, you know, what is God going to do? I love what the Old Testament, uh, the customs were in Exodus 22 and 1. The covenant was that if a man steals an ox or something, he had to restore it fivefold. Get ready. God said, I'm going to give you more than you got started with. I'm laying that foundation. I want you to get it. Quit looking at the mindset. I'm just getting a little bit back. I'm getting mine back. I don't want mine back. I want more than mine back. Why? Because I lost some interest while mine was gone. I lost some ability while mine was gone. And the Bible said, oh, I'm, I'm laying the foundation. So go with me to 2 Kings chapter 8 and verse 1. Elisha said unto the woman who has raised her son to life, or, 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 he re restored the life. See, her son was restored, was the, was the first miracle. And says, to rise and go from the household and so, so journey for the Lord has called for a famine in the land. In verse number 5, and it came to pass, he was telling the king, uh, how that his uh, the son was restored from death. He was his life was restored. And behold, the woman that he restored the life cried to the king's house for her land. And Gehazi, oh Lord, the woman and her son, the one that already understands restoration, the woman and her son is at the gate. And the king asked her, says, what is it that you want? How they, and, and, he be, and, and he began to tell the officer in verse number six, restore everything that was hers, even all the fruit from the field since this time till now, which more than, which says she had more than she started with. No, I'm saying it again. Don't get it in your mindset. I'm getting mine back. Oh, no, I'm getting more than mine back. I want what the devil took from somebody else. I want it back. I, I want something more than I have. Hear what he said in the book of Jewel, uh, 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 which in the book of Jeremiah chapter 13, uh, 30 verse 16, and they shall devour you and shall devour them and, and all the adversaries, every one of them and shall go into captivity and they shall spoil thee and be spoiled and all of the prey. I feel the anointing of God because somebody just got the attitude right now. I'm getting my stuff back. That's what I come to preach for. I come to change your attitude. I come to change 
your atmosphere and change your mindset and I can get it back. And he said, verse 17, for I will restore health back unto you and I will heal thee of thy wounds. You used to be called outcast, but God said, I'm about getting ready to heal you of your wounds. A wound is where there was a hurt. And God said, I'm getting ready to heal that hurt. You used to be called outcast, nobody, trash, nobody. But God said, I'm getting ready to change who you are. And I'm, oh, somebody need to get ready in this year for us to believe that God can restore. Now, it's going to take us believing. It's going to take us walking in that right area. I love what Joel said in Joel 2 and verse 25. Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Joel come by and said, God's going to do something good. I've been preaching God's going to do something good. God's going to do something good. And he said, don't be afraid. You know, any time that God gets ready to challenge you, he tell you don't be afraid because your fear is going to take over. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. They bring, the trees bring forth fruit and the fig trees and the vines, they do yield. Be glad the children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain. Oh, somebody hold on with me. And verse 23, he said, I've given you the former rain and it's going to come down mollery. I'm giving you the former rain and the latter rain and I'm going to give it to you in the first month. What month are we in? Hello. What month are we in? He said, I'm about to give you a double portion in the first month. I'm not waiting till February. I'm not. I'm waiting for God says, this is the day. We are his. Oh, somebody need to get excited with me this morning because God said, I'm about to restore what the devil stole. Hold on, I ain't finished just yet. He said he's going to do it and the floor shall be filled and overflow. Then he says, I'm going to deal with something. And verse 25, I'm going to restore unto you the years. The years. See, because there's some of you, God said, I'm going to restore the years. Some of you said, I, oh, I, but I'm just getting too old. You can say that if you want to. I feel better today. How this year is my 60, I, I'm going to mess with some of your mind. I, 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 if I live, and I am going to live to be September, September the 29th, I'll be 65 years old. I know some of you look at me and say, oh, Pastor, what did you, how you doing look good. I, I tell you what, I stay in the Word. I, I stay on my knees. I, I keep believing. I, I keep trusting. Do I have problems? Yes, I have problems. I, I've got problems and I have problems last year in my body, I, but I just kept on preaching. I have problems in my house? I, yes, I do. I keep on preaching. I have problem with kids. Yes, I do. I keep on preaching. I have problem with grandkids. What do I do? I just keep on trucking. I keep on preaching because I ain't got nobody but God. And I look for my resurrection. I look for God to restore some things that the devil stole from me. And I'm getting it back. And I will restore the years that the locust has eating, the, com uh, the, uh, the cranker worm, the caterpillars, and the palmer words, and my great army which I sent among you, he said, I'm going to restore it all. I, hear, I, I love what he said in verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord God who has dealt wonderfully with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know who I am in the midst of the Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and none else. And I, my people shall never be ashamed. He wanted us to understand. God said, I'm bringing you to a place you never have to go. I'm ashamed to look because you know they're talking. Because then I'm going to bring you to the place that your house is free. Your family's free. Get you to the place in your life. See, if you don't go through a storm, you don't know if God can do it. I'm going to say it again. If, uh, Mama, I, I, I'm going to preach to you because you know what I'm preaching. I, I'm going to preach to you because you know what I'm preaching. I, if I don't go through a storm, I can't tell you God can. How can you get up and preach and prophesy and tell other people how big your God is and you ain't never had a storm? I'm sitting here as a woman. How they had cancer how many years ago? A uh -huh, hundred years ago. Uh, it's been so many years ago. Uh, back, under pa uh, uh, back under Papa Dobbs, and she's still healed. You don't think the devil ever lies to her and say cancer's going to come back. I tell you, it does. Uh, but I tell you what she does. She said, devil, go back to hell. Where'd you come from? I've been healed. Uh, I've been restored. Uh, and God said, I'm going to restore the years. Which tells me 
My best years are still ahead of me, son. My best years are still ahead of me. God getting ready to do something for you. And my best years are ahead of me. And when God gets ready to restore something, Jesus walked in in the book of Luke chapter 6, and he restored a man's hand like the other one. He said, I'm going to make you whole again and make you complete again. When men today in the world society said restore, it means it is going to take something broke and fix it. It means it's going to bring something back to the former state. It means something that had been neglected, some old house restored, some old car restored. It means it's going to put it back. That's the way that the world thinks about it. But when God begins to talk about resurrection, he's talking about putting something back better than it was from the original. He's putting it back bigger than it was before you got started. He's talking about putting something back greater than you can. You say, Pastor, you better give me some Bible. I just happen to have some. Hello. I just happen to have some Bible. And he told Job in the... uh, which is Job chapter 42 and verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter year of Job's life more than the beginning. He said, I'm going to give you more at the end. Why? I'm going to be doing more for God at the end. I'm going to work more for God at the end. I'm going to need more revenue at the end. I'm going to need more help at the end. He said, God said, I'm getting ready to do something. We all know ABCs. How many knows your ABCs? Hold on a second, and if they can stay with me back, I want to talk to you about some ABCs of restoring. If they get ready to roll with me, hallelujah, get ready. A, somebody say A. God's getting ready to restore your anointing. B, God's getting ready to, uh, our burdens to, to be lost. Three, or, 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 I kind of say A, B, C. C, he's getting ready to restore your compassion. He's getting, and which indeed, he's getting ready to restore your desire for the house of God and for the work of God. E, he's getting ready to restore your effectiveness. F, he's getting ready to restore your faith. G, he's getting ready to restore your glory, the true glory of God that's in your life. H, he's getting ready to restore the hungry of God in your life. I, he's getting ready to restore your illumination so that you can see through the eyes of God how big God is. J, he's getting ready to restore your joy. K, He's getting ready to restore your kindness. Oh, he's getting ready to restore your love. I wish I had somebody understand. God's getting ready to bring a restoration to your life. M, he's getting ready to restore your motivation. You used to believe it and you lost it, but now you're getting it back. Uh, N, he's getting ready to restore your newness, freshness. Out of the cut and dry to something brand new. Oh, hey, he's getting ready to restore your optimism that you're getting ready to believe again it's going to happen. P, he's getting ready to restore the power in God in your life and your prayer life. He's getting ready to restore power. Q, he's getting ready to restore quality, which is your character. God, I don't care how bad you messed up. God said, I'm getting ready to restore it. R, he's getting ready to restore relationships, the relationships that you have with God and with one another. Yes, he's getting ready to restore your sincerity about the things of God. T, he's getting ready to restore your talents, things that you had that you laid down. U, he's getting ready to restore unction, which is the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life. V, he's getting ready to restore victory so I can defeat the devil because there's too many Christians walk in a defeated life. W, oh, this is where we're going. He's getting ready to restore work. Worship. We're getting ready to go into worship. I wish I had somebody to understand from A to Z that God is bringing a resurrection and God is going to restore some things in our life. Oh, we're excited what God is doing. These are great days. You want to be here. These are great days. Today is anniversary Sunday, 56 years. How do we will be honoring my mom and my dad. It's going to be awesome. Reverend Walter Lane is coming in to help sing it because he loved my dad. He said, I just got to be here. I got to be a part of that celebration. And he'll be singing this morning. And, how do he, and God, he has some songs that my dad used to love. And he'll be singing one or two songs this morning. Tonight he'll be singing. There'll be videos and pictures this morning. Videos and pictures tonight. It's going to be awesome. We want you in the house today. It's going to be an awesome time. If you've ever been blessed by Pastor Jimmy Dobbs.
you got to be here today, 1030, come and honor him. Give him one more time. Say, I'm going to honor him for the word he preached to me, for the faith that he preached to me, the word he pulled me out of hell. you got to be here. Honor Pastor Jimmy Dobbs today. Until we see you right here at the Pax Revival Center Church and our 56th anniversary, may God bless you be with our prayer. I want to invite you to be with us from Founders Day as we celebrate our 56 years of a church honoring our founder, Pastor Reverend Jimmy and Joyce Dodson. When the, your life gets troubled uh, and it seems there's no hope, uh, Jesus can come walking uh, your bill of waves uh, at the fourth watch uh, and speak peace uh, to your troubled soul. Uh, he can speak to that storm uh, that's going on in your life. Uh, honey, he can cause uh, a great calm uh, under your feet uh, and cause you to be saved. Oh, and then we're going to be hearing him preach and my mom sing and great things are happening. You don't want to miss Founders Day because Pastor Welton Lane will be here singing and blessing us. That's him. Oh, my Savior, don't you know that man of Galilee who set the captain free if you feel your little cup up to the brim. That's him. Yes, that's him. God will honor your desire. All you got to do is desire something. He said, I give you, Holy One, help me right here. He said, I give you your heart's desire. All you got to do is desire it. Oh, it's going to be a great time. If you've ever been blessed, healed, and delivered, if you just love Pastor Jimmy Dobbs, come and still support him one more year. Come and support him one more year and honor him one more time as we celebrate this great day, 56 years of uh, uh, which Pax Revival Center Church changing lives around the world. We'll see you in the house on Founders Day honoring Pastor Jimmy and Joyce and Dobbs. That Wednesday night service is an awesome time in the Lord where I get to preach, I get to pray for uh, you know, folks that I, I have more time to give personal ministry. Make your plans to be with us every Wednesday night right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Great things are happening. Wednesday night, 7.30. We'll see you in the house. You don't want to miss Friday morning. Every Friday morning, great things are happening. I will be praying for the sick. If you need a miracle from God, you want to be here every Friday morning at 10.30. It is called a miracle service because miracles take place. Make your plans to be with us Friday morning, 10.30. Bring someone that needs a word from God.